I came from a very religious Christian family. Um, my background is West Indian. My parents migrated to Canada about 35 years ago. So really, Canada is really all we really know of, you know, culture-wise. Um, my mother's background and heritage was actually Muslim, but in coming to Canada, she um, converted to Christianity. So that being the case, she became very strong in her faith and really taught us the value of God. And uh, this was very important to me growing up because I always had this uh, recognition of God. I didn't have this uh, concept of, uh, you know, the, the Trinity or anything of that sort, but God was very important to me. So about the time, you know, I was in kindergarten up to the time I, before puberty, I was, pr I was fairly cognizant of God. And what happened is that, you know, as, as any youth grows up, you know, we get involved in the culture. We get involved in the, I guess, some of the vices of society. Um, in my case, it was the hip-hop culture. Now, up to this time, um, you know, I never forgot my prayer. You know, this is something I was taught consistently throughout my life. But coming to the time as a, as a teenager, those prayers became somewhat vain. They became somewhat, uh, you know, God, give me a good girlfriend. God, give me a good car. You know, things which are very trivial, right? Very material. And um, I sort of was at a material uh, high, but at a very spiritual low. And, you know, you begin to think about life, you know, where you come from, why are you here? And it, and it just came to me, you know, it just came to me. And uh, unfortunately, being distracted by, um, you know, being a DJ, you know, come from a very disciplined family, very traditional in the sense of go to school, get a job, you know, get a, a house with a white picket fence. I mean, this was a concept, right? So I was trying to battling, you know, I was battling, you know, the, the two different worlds, my, my spiritual world and also the, the outward. And uh, this is what compelled me to, you know, really think about, you know, my purpose in here, my purpose, uh, you know, why am I alive? Why, why am I, you know, doing what I'm doing? about 16 years old, I met this girl, and she was Muslim. Now, she wasn't very practicing Muslim, but she was the one who kind of sparked my, I guess you could say, spiritual enlightenment and uh, started my search into what, I guess, concluded with me becoming a Muslim. And, uh, you know, learning about Islam was, was somewhat difficult for me. I had a lot of misconceptions about it, um, so much so that, you know, being uh, going to a fairly... Uh, I guess Anglo-Saxon um, Western European school, um, there weren't very many Muslims. It was very um, not an ethnic population. And, um, you know, I used to kind of mock the Muslim sisters for wearing, uh, you know, the hijab. And I had a very vague concept of it. I thought it was oppression more than, um, you know, uh, integrity and modesty. And um, so, like I said, I was more interested in my material life rather than my spiritual life. But this girl, she kind of focused my direction towards Islam. And one day, I mean, this is when I was about 16 years old, um, I, w I, was, I was shopping for a Christmas gift for my family. It was a very busy day. And this day was very important for me because this is the day when I think God really opened up my heart. Um, I was shopping for a t-shirt. I walked outside the mall. And not knowing, I actually had that t-shirt in my hand. I didn't pay for it. And, you know, being, being very, uh, I was terrified because I'm like, what did I just do? I walked back to the mall. And I'm like, and at this time, there were bodyguards chasing me. I mean, security guards chasing me. I'm just walking aimlessly, not knowing what I was doing. And I turned around and, and they got me, they grabbed me by the arm, took me upstairs and uh, said, you know, you're charged for theft under $5,000. You know, it, irrespective of the fact that, you know, I was walking back, it was a, it was a mistake, but, you know, it was a stupid mistake. So, um... Uh, you know, I come from a very, a very, very, um, you know, loving family. So them being called on the phone saying your son is being charged for theft was devastating for them, and for me as well. And it was an embarrassment. And on top of that, my parents were actually on vacation during this time. So hearing this, getting a call, you know, from a police officer, your son's in, in custody. It was, it was, it was devastating, you know. And coming home on the subway, you know, I thought to myself, what am I doing? You know, like, like, this is terrible. W where am I going to turn to? And this is when I, I, I thought about, you know what? I was invited to the mosque once. Maybe I should go. 
because maybe they have the answers which I, I, I'm, I'm seeking. And it was more of a, it was more of a, a I, I, need, I needed someone to talk to, I needed companionship, real companionship, not, you know, fake companionship. So this is when I went to the mosque. And really, um, going to the mosque, you know, the brotherhood, the earnesty, the modesty of the brothers, it compelled me to learn more about the religion. And uh, this is when my quest, my quest, you could say, really began. When I went to the mosque, the first thing the brothers talked to me about was um, this concept of monotheism. And as a Christian, you know, we, we, we say we have this concept of monotheism. However, um, the Islamic, um, how, we, how we believed in it was so much different because this, this utterly um, uh, unique God, which uh, Muslims worship, you know, was active in our lives. You know, we had to recognize him, we had to worship him, and follow his commands. And this is, this is what really said, you know what, this makes more sense. This makes a lot more sense, you know, um, coming from a very disciplined family. Um, the concept of five daily prayers, it, it, it sprung. Like, I mean, it really it made a lot of sense to me. Because, you know, we live our lives, you know, I know in my daily life, we go to school, we come home, and so many things happen in between. You know, you may have, uh, you know, said something incorrect. You may have, you know, th I mean, society itself, is, is some, this could be a, a pollutant to, to our soul. So... Thinking about Islam, you know, the concept of five daily prayers, number one, and the concept of brotherhood. Brotherhood in, in, in a pure sense that we're all different, but at the same time we all recognize that we, that, you know, we believe in the, the same God. You know, we worship Him and we turn to Him five times a day. This was exactly what I was looking for. Like I was saying before that um, I was looking for more of a, I guess, a companionship. You know, because you know, I found that me being around certain individuals caused my decline in spirituality. So this is what Islam taught me, that, you know, um, we're united under this, this, this concept of, um, they call it Tawheed, you know, monotheism. And, uh, to, you know, it was very difficult me, for me to uh, reconcile, you know, my, my uh, 17 years of being a Christian with now becoming a Muslim. I was trying to compromise um, in the beginning the, 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 two, the two different, um, I guess, ide um, ideologies. Um, the concept of the crucifixion, the concept of divine sonship. Um, it was very difficult for me to, to leave because it's been, it was engraved into me. But I realized that in the end, you know, I would rather answer to God in saying that I worship you alone with no partners. And I can't see, I can't conceive of, um, you know, utterly just you know, perfect, merciful God saying, you know, you were wrong, um, you know, worship someone else, you know. So this is what really compelled me to learn and to really, in the end, accept Islam. Because, you know, e everything's keeping you back, but in the end I had to accept it. Like this was the truth, and it was time to make a change in my life for the better. I hid my religion for about a year. Um, I was afraid that my parents would be very disappointed in me. Being a Christian, um, raised as a Christian, it was very difficult for me to say, you know, I'm a Muslim now. I don't believe in what you believe. I mean, coming from a very traditional family, this was something which you never, ever do. Um, so I prayed in secret. I fasted in secret. I did everything in secret. But it came a point where I had to, you know, admit, you know, th the fact that I am a Muslim. I have to manifest my inward with my outward. So. I began to, you know, buy the, the literature. Um, Muslims would call me. Um, you know, I went to the mosque frequently. I couldn't hide that anymore. So, in the end, my mom actually found out that I was Muslim. I didn't have to tell her, and I told her, yeah, I am a Muslim. And they've grown to be very tolerant, I guess, in the end, with what I do as a Muslim, even though they don't agree with it. But, you know, they, they allow it because I think they've seen the change in me. And they've seen that, uh, you know, everything I've, I've, I've accomplished in my life is a result of, uh, I guess you could say, my faith. You know, I really improved in school because I found that knowledge is so sacred in Islam that we have to exert ourselves to, to achieve that goal of being more educated, not only in the, in the religious sense, but in the secular sense. So right now I study criminology in school and law. So this, I mean, you know, I can't, I can't think of anything better than the fact that I'm doing so much better in school. My parents are happier because I'm doing better in school. And I'm happier because now I'm doing something which I enjoy. And at the same time, it doesn't conflict with me being a Muslim. You know, it's nothing, you know, uh, out of the box. You know, so 
I mean, me being getting scholarships in school, um, you know, being recognized as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a scholar in school, you know, in, in, in my particular field and study, it's really inspired me a lot. My character has changed um, to my, towards my parents, especially my relationship. Like, I mean, you would have thought that it would have created animosity, but it actually made things actually better for me because now I've been a lot more patient with my parents in any circumstance. And I think that, again, the concept of believing in one God and knowing that God, you know, you're accountable for what you do, it really, it, it, it changed me totally in all my conduct.